What a glorious afternoon in central Indiana. Am I right or am I right? We're going to talk about sports. We'll talk about the Colts extending to Forrest Buckner. What's that mean? Free agents in 2025. We're already talking free agency in 25. Stop the madness. Let's play some football. Tomorrow at the Colts Complex, Colts going to have Shane Steichen, Michael Pittman Jr., others available for the media. Optional workouts continue on West 56th Street. The NFL Draft just a week and a half away. Going to be very interesting to see what the Colts do with that 15th overall pick. People ask, are they going to trade up? Are they going to trade back? I think that the odds are better that they trade back, but I think it depends on the first 14 picks. I don't think Chris Ballard is going to know whether he's going to trade up, back, or what with 15 until some of this draft actually transpires, and he has an idea who's going to be on the board at 15. Uh, we're going to talk about Caitlin Clark, obviously. She's going to be drafted number one overall by the Indiana Fever. I'm going to tell you why this is an ag absolutely perfect destination for her. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Pacers a little bit. Their first round series starts in just six days against the Milwaukee Bucks. They don't have to mess with the playing crap because they took care of business yesterday against the Atlanta Hawks, scoring 157 points. The fans wanted 160. Would it have killed you, Carlisle, to allow him to put up a three toward the buzzer? Would that have been classless? I guess it would have been classless, but I don't care. We have been on the business end of enough ass whoopings to whoop some ass ourselves and revel in it. Uh, and we'll talk about portal panic. It is insanity in the transfer portal. My God almighty. Like it's it, Boogie Fland is leaving Kentucky. What's that mean for Indiana? I'm going to tell you what it ought to mean for Indiana and what it ought to mean for Boogie Fland. This is Inside Indiana Sports and now with Ken Sterling for Monday, Tax Day, April 15th, 2024. If you don't have your taxes prepared and filed, what the hell is the matter with you? It's April 15th for the love of God. Are you crazy people? Or are you just procrastinators? And what are you doing not having a professional complete your tax forms for you? Irresponsible, stupid, frankly, financially, to do them yourself unless you're a trained tax accountant or attorney. Uh, make sure, oh, by the way, if you're the Colts GM and had the number one overall pick, who would you go with? Go Pacers. Had the number one overall pick, and you've got your quarterback already. Hey, gee, gee, I'd probably take, I'd probably trade back to a place where I felt really good about getting Marvin, Marvin Harrison the third. Tell you the truth, does that mean I'd trade back to third or fifth or whatever? Have to figure that out. But I would trade back. I'm not taking Caleb Williams. I'm not. I'm going to trust that what happened last year with Anthony Richardson is an anomaly. And he's going to be able to play. We are brought to you by today. By the way, Scott, thank you very much for the donation. Very nice of you. Uh, we're brought to you by MyBookie. You go to MyBookie. Use promo code Kent. You can get a sign-up bonus of up to $1,000. How about that? That's winning before you even play. You can bet on anything, anywhere, anytime at MyBookie. All the information will be in the show description and the comments, as always. Make sure and subscribe. You know what? I was going to have a prize today, but I opened it up. I bought a thing at Pristine Auction, and uh, I thought, you know, this will be pretty cool. And, and so it, it was a card, but it was kind of a grab bag card of a proof, like a, a FLIR, some kind of proof thing. It wound up being of Meek Mill, and it's an autograph card, but the place for the autograph is unsigned because it's a one-of-one one proof. So there you go. Uh, that is, uh, I, I thought I'm not giving away a one-of-one a one proof of Meek Mill. I'm just not going to do it. I, I, when we give away prizes, it's going to be relevant to your lives, and our lives is sports. I just mid misread the description. All right, make sure and like the video. It's a nice thing to do. That's the thumbs up icon. Let's go. And if you want to make a donation, as Scott did, and he donates quite a bit and often, we really appreciate it. Include a question or a comment. We will read it in real time, answer it as part of the show. It's what we do. Let's talk about sports. Let's talk about DeForest Buckner and what this means for the Colts. Signing him two years, 
uh, $46 million. So $23 million a year, not this year, but 25 and 26. So he's going to be under contract here. He just turned 30. So he's going to be under contract here through his age 32 season, which will be his 11th year in the league. I, I don't think it's a bad deal. It, like all of the Colts extensions, it's really hard to argue against him, right? But it's also not all that hard to argue against him. It, it's kind of like, okay, like, are we better with DeForest Buckner? Yes. But what does that mean? That's the question. Does that put you closer to a Super Bowl? I guess it doesn't put you farther away. You know, it, it feels like this another move of kind of treading water a little bit. They are who they are. And they haven't made the playoffs since 2000 with this same group of people. So, but here's some things to know about DeForest Buckner and why this is a good deal. All right. Uh, he's played eight seasons. On Pro Football Focus, he is the number 12 ranked defensive tackle in football and the number four ranked defensive tackle this past year in pass rush as an inside defender. He has missed one game in his time with the Colts. He has missed two games in his entire career. He has had eight sacks in each of the last two seasons, which is a pretty damn good number for a defensive tackle. Free agents after this year, so you wonder, who, who might the Colts extend moving forward? There's really only one candidate, and that's Ryan Kelly. Are they going to extend Ryan, or is Ryan going to think, you know what, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm going to call it a day. I've made a lot of money in the National Football League as a first-round draft pick out of Alabama. That may determine what the Colts do in this draft as far as drafting an interior offensive lineman. We'll see. I don't think you got to spend a first rounder on a center like Ryan Grigson did in drafting Ryan Kelly. But, you know, a third round, fourth round, fifth round, going and getting a guy who you project is able to fill those shoes after a year of being mentored by Ryan Kelly, that's reasonable. Uh, Mo Ali Cox, free agent, Quitty Pay. We'll get to Quitty Pay in a minute because it's kind of an interesting question that needs to be answer, answered sooner rather than later by the Colts regarding his free agency for the 2025 season. Uh, Kylan Granson will be a free agent. EJ Speed, Julian Blackman, again. Daya Odengbo, Ashton Doolin. So that's all you got is free agents. Even if you lose guys, you're not losing a lot, right? I mean, none of these guys play exceptionally important positions other than Quiddy Pay. And Quiddy Pay, this is year four for Quiddy Pay. So, they, the Colts, by May, for, May 2nd, they have to decide whether they want to exercise that fifth-year option to keep Quitty Pay in 2025 or kind of avail him to other potential employers and, and see what happens there. So Quitty Pay, his number, given what he has done to this point, $13.37 million for the 2025 season, again, this is not, it's not a no-brainer in either direction. It's like on a scale of 1 to 10, 1, he's got to go, and 10, he's got to be kept. Quiddy pays probably a 6. And at 13 million bucks, is it worth keeping Quiddy Pay? How do you project him as a football player in the 2024 season? I think he got a key, or in the 2025 season, he's here for 24. But in 25, what do you want to do? He's kind of had a propensity to get dinged up a little bit, which bothers me a little as far as investing $13.5 million-ish in him next year. But he keeps ascending. And you don't want to quit on a player who is in ascension. The last thing that you want, although I don't see this happening, is Quiddy Pay to all of a sudden break through, get 14 sacks, and you know what? You're kind of at the mercy of the market in determining what he's going to get paid and whether you're going to be able to pay him. So, quitty pay, keep him. Again, it, it, it won't surprise me that they keep him because that is what Chris Ballard does. Chris Ballard keeps his own. That's not an indictment. It's not a, 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 a wonderful endorsement either, but that's what he does. Nine and eight, you wouldn't expect everybody to be kept, but it's what he does.
Mm. What are you going to do? Uh, no point in deciding until the draft. Right, if Dallas Turner falls to you at 15, mm, that's not bad. You know, uh, you could do worse than Dallas Turner at 15. So if he drops that far and because becomes an edge who's going to be available on a rookie deal for the next four years, you make that move or do you? We'll talk about it as we move forward and after the draft. Craziness in the portal. Craziness. It's Bedlam in the portal. The It's Eddie M. Eddie M. It's craziness. The portal has gone bonkers. Miles Rice committed to Indiana over the weekend. We know that. Pac-12 player of the year last year. Tony Perkins has committed to Mizzou, the Lawrence North product, going to Missouri. I wouldn't go to Missouri on a bet. No amount of NIL money is going to get me to go to Missouri, period. I, I have no respect for that athletic department whatsoever. It's a story. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, Aaron Bradshaw, he went into the portal. He is now committed to the Ohio State Buckeyes. You've got uh, Umar Balo and Connor Hickman. They are both on their visit to Indiana today. We'll see if either commits to the Hoosiers. They're going hard at Hickman. They're going hard at Balo. Balo has a, uh, a, a crystal ball prediction that he's going to pledge Indiana. That would be a good get. If you can get both he and, uh, you know, our guy from Washington State, the great Miles Rice, that's kind of interesting already. There are more available. Kanan Carlisle from Stanford. He visits Friday. Farrell Payne from Minnesota or Farrell Payne. Uh, Ryan Conwell from Indiana State. No visit scheduled yet, but he would be an interesting get. And then Boogie Fland has requested his release from the University of Kentucky. Somehow, some way, he and Mark Pope, I don't know what happened. I'm not saying that hands were thrown. In fact, I've heard no reports that there was fisticuffs on the way out between Boogie Fland and Mark Pope. However, Boogie Fland, third person uh, re reference guy, you know, it, Boogie likes Indiana. He's like Jimmy on Seinfeld. I, I can't have that as part of this basketball program. I can't have a guy who calls himself Boogie. Boogie likes Indiana. Boogie had a good time talking to Mike Woodson. I, I just can't have that. So he is automatically, like, if Indiana gets a commitment from Boogie Fland, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to ignore, maybe on YouTube TV, there's going to be an option where I can say, I no longer want to see this player. So please, like, bubble him out or, or airbrush him gone. I went to Indiana playing four on five when Boogie, because uh, I don't want Boogie in my house. If Boogie's going to call himself Boogie, I don't want Boogie around and on my TV is around. So no Boogie, no Boogie for Kent. Um, we'll see what happens with all of this. Uh, Caitlin Clark, she is going to be selected with the number one overall draft pick tonight, and she is going to completely change the WNBA's fortunes, literally, in Indianapolis, and this is a perfect place for her to come because people in Indy just don't care. Famous people can walk around Indianapolis and nobody bothers them. They go into a restaurant, nobody says boo, see guys all the time. Uh, and I've never seen anybody get bothered. I, I can't tell you the number of times I've seen like sports icons in this city walk around unmolested or walk through the mall or wait in line at a gas station. I've told that story a few times about Adam Vinatieri at a Speedway gas station, just waiting in line with his hat. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Because I just talked to him in the, in the locker room. Went to him the next day. I said, hey, could you do that when you were playing in Foxborough? He goes, oh, no, man. We couldn't go out to dinner, couldn't go to the mall, couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't get my own gas. It was impossible. Here, people are just chill. This is fantastic. I love it here. If you don't need to get recognized all the time, if you don't need that affirmation, Indy is a place for you. Caitlin Clark strikes me as somebody who does not need the affirmation uh, of fans yelling her name out on the streets or in restaurants. So she's going to love it here. Uh, Pacers playoff journey begins Sunday. Can the Pacers raise their level of defensive intensity to that playoff level where when they need to get a stop, they can get a stop? Here are two ways you win in the playoffs. you got a guy who can go get your buckets, and you got guys who can stop 
guys from getting buckets. Giannis Antetokounmpo, according to Sham Sharana, Sham says that it is uncertain whether he's going to be able to go in game one. That calf is still bothering him. He's getting a lot of rehab done, but his presence, availability for the Bucks on Sunday, unknown, as is the time for the game on Sunday. The IU spring game, spring football game, this Thursday, 8 o'clock, doors open at 6.30, free food while it lasts, free drinks, awesome. Fans can only sit in the East stands. That means the, the stands that are toward Assembly Hall, not the ones that are toward uh, Dave's Food Mart or the convenient. Varsity Villas, Walnut Knolls. You with me? Uh, can you tell that it was a while ago that I was a student down there? Again, doors open at 6.30. The game will be broadcast live on BTN. So you got that going for you. Uh, all kinds of things happen with the Colts. I can't wait to hear from Shane Steichen tomorrow, Michael Pittman Jr., all the players who are made available. I'm sure Zaire Franklin is going to be made available. The Colts will love it when Zaire Franklin talks because he's really, really good at it. We'll be there tomorrow. I can't wait to share with you the musings of the Colts and Shane Steichen. I like Shane Steichen. I trust Shane Steichen. And that isn't easy. I don't trust a lot of people, but I trust him. When he says stuff to the media, I'm in. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Breakfast with Kent. Bulletins at once on the YouTube channel where Indianapolis sports news always comes first.